Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. First of all, thanks for clicking on this video because it's gonna be a real doozy, okay? Uh, second of all, if y'all seen my video from uh, Wednesday about the panic, y'all have to excuse me, I was going through something at that moment, but you know what? Back in the game. So, this is going to be an interesting video. It's gonna be definitely different than anything that I have ever talked about on here before, and I'm about to expose myself. And, uh, but before I do that, let's just talk about a few things. Okay, let's interview Tootie real quick. Okay, Tootie, what happens if you don't obey the law? You go to jail. Ooh. What happens if mommy doesn't follow adult rules? You go to jail. Oh my goodness, is Jill scary? Yeah, you get locked up with iron bars so you can't escape. Oh my God. All right, so one last question. Let's just see here. Um, would you ever want to disobey the law and possibly go to jail? Never. Good. This is gonna be our little intro. I'm going to hit the gym and then I will be back to talk to y'all, just me and you. You know what I'm saying, it's gonna be a personal thing, but you know what? As usual, we would never want you to forget to. Like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. What? Bye. Hi beautiful people, so I am back from the gym and I am here to tell you my story. So first of all, disclaimer, um, this is gonna have, some pretty graphic details in it um, so if you have children around you or if one's looking over your shoulder or if you are a kid I would just like exit out of this if you're a parent and come back to it later um, or don't watch it at all if you're a child or um, or I don't know just let me throw that disclaimer out there I was at the gym and I got my wife beater on so I'm really feel like I'm thugging today <laughs> Anyways, I'm surely not here to glorify any of this experience, and I don't suggest anybody else takes their butt to prison either. Okay? Okay. But hey, we're going to tell this story. This year, 2018, is my 10 year anniversary from being out of prison. That being said, I'm here to tell you guys I'm not fresh out the boat. Fresh off the boat, fresh out the boat, you get me. I ain't fresh out the doors, the gates, fresh out the pen. Ba -ba -ti -ti -ta. I have been out for 10 years this year and I have not even had a speeding ticket since I've been out. Like I have walked the straight and narrow. I have tried my best to be a perfect little angel. Um, even though I'm not, but yeah. But I've tried my best and um, I'm just not about that life no more, friends. That thug life is not for me. I I'm a changed woman. But we gonna get into that too. So, um, I guess I'll just start from the beginning. Let me tell you guys, I can very easily get off on a bunch of tangents. I'm a chatty person. I love to talk. I love story times. I just, you know, I love to chit chat. So I'm going to try my best to stay on topic with my prison story. And if you have any questions of like anything that I touch on, just let me know in the comments down below. I may possibly make a video on it depending on how, you know, how I need to answer the question or I'll just answer you. So, um, yeah, we'll, we will just say that there. So this is going to be that. If you want to know about all the stuff that led up to me going to prison, if you want to know about what happened to me after I left prison, if you want to know about gory de more gory details that happened while I was in prison, just hit your girl up down below. Okay. Okay. All right. So on my 21st birthday, isn't that supposed to be a time of bliss? I was club hopping and I got into a fight with these two girls at a store. Okay, my friend was going into the store and when she came out, two girls came following her out and to fight her because she'd gotten to it with them in there. And um, I reached in the back seat, got the Jim Beam bottle that we had had in the trunk, in the back seat, and got out and just got to fighting. <laughs> And now I was no stranger to fighting when I was younger. 
I grew up, um, I had a very troubled childhood. I bounced around a lot, groups, homes, fosters, homes, da, 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 da. Um, I ran with a street crowd and that is just what we did. It was very normal for us to fight. Um, I don't recommend it at all. I don't, there's nothing solved from violence at all and nothing ever got solved that way. But that was my reality of my life then, okay? So when I got into the fight with these two girls, the cops showed up at the club that I, we left from the, the store and I went to the club and next thing I know, cops are there to get us. And I was with my boyfriend and my friend at the time. And when we came outside, they slammed my boyfriend down on the hood of the car. They put the gun in his head and they were looking for me. And I ended up going off to jail. Traumatic experience for everybody. Um, when I got to jail, you know, of course, jail sucks. You know, they pat you down. They put you in these tanks with the craziest people you could think of, people that have been tripping on crack for days and they're like climbing the walls and they're like freaking out on you and they're looking crazy and like you just got into a fight with somebody and but you're in there with somebody that, you know, probably killed their dog and drank their blood. I mean, who knows? I mean, like this the stuff, right? That <laughs> you're in jail. So anyways, and I was no stranger to jail either. I started getting locked up when I was about 12 or 13. So this just happened to be the last straw where the judge signed it sealed it and sent me down the road. So I got sentenced to three years in prison and I was shook. I thought that I was only gonna get like a year, but you know, honestly, looking back at it, thank God that I got as long as I did because for the first 17 months that I was in prison, I was doing everything in prison that I was doing on the streets, everything. You know, with the exception of like having freedom, driving a car, but all the illegal stuff, all the shady stuff that you think that you can do on the streets, it's going on in prison. I trust me, trust me. So I'll just tell you my experience. First of all, the county jail is absolutely disgusting. If you're a picky eater, don't go to jail. The food is like slop. They feed you food that looks like snot, literally. And when you first get there, you can always tell who the new girls are because they're not hungry. They won't eat. <laughs> Give them about a week, baby girl, and they'll be eating their food, your food, and everybody else's food. Slop starts looking real good when you're hungry. Trust me and believe me, okay? You start packing on the pounds because you can't move. Like, I got up to like, oh man, you know, you're just stuck in these dorms with all these women. It's these dorms that are just like bunk beds everywhere with little thin mattresses that you know, your dog wouldn't want to sleep on, right? And they don't care about you. They don't care that your back hurts or that you're uncomfortable or that you're constipated or that you're thirsty. Girl, you're in jail. They don't care about you there. You're a prisoner. You're a lawbreaker. You are scum. That's how that's how you feel in there and that's, that's how they look at you. So, yeah, so I'm in there um, for, I get sentenced to three years prison. I get ready to get sent down the road. I was sat in the county jail for six months before they came and got me. And the way that they work it there is that when you're getting ready to go to prison, they will like come and get you in the middle of the night. Like you don't know when you're going because they don't want you to tell your family members to m like meet the truck up the road and like hold them hostage and like escape or something. So you never know the date that you're going to prison until they tap you in the middle of the night and say, get your beep up, right? So this is what happens. Six months in, here comes the time, and they tap me. Then they get, I wanna say probably about 20 of us, and they put us all in this bread wagon. And if you don't know what a bread wagon-like vehicle truck is, it is a truck that has no windows, right? It's just like a boxed truck, and there's like seats in there. And we're all handcuffed and shackled together, you know, by our feet. We're all shackled, so we can't move, so we're all like walking like this. And we had to ride like eight hours, right? Hot, sweaty in that truck. If somebody farted, like, oh gosh, it was awful. It was so disgusting. It was hot in there and like moist. The air was moist. And if you had to pee, guess what? You peed on yourself. If you had to poo, guess what? They pulled over and let you go. Not you pooed yourself, girlfriend. They don't care. They did not care about you. So after this long, horrible ride, 
to the main prison, which is what happens is they take you from jail and they send you to the biggest prison in that state. This is how Florida works. They send you to this prison and there you sit and wait until you get sent to another prison, right? When you first get to, when we first got to the prison, it was an intake situation. You spent like 12 hours going through intake, answering questions. And let me tell you something, while you're in intake, it's not like you're at an interview where you're sitting in a nice office drinking, you know, Fiji water out of the water machine. You're like sitting on the floors, handcuffed and shackled. You're tired. All you want to do is pee without having handcuffs on. You know, all you want, like you feel dirty and disgusting at all times. Never, not once do you actually, in three years that I was there, did I get out of the shower and felt clean. The soap that they give you there is like, you, you, would, you would beg for hotel soap. You would, I mean, hotel soap would be such a luxury. For versus what you get when you're in jail or in prison. So you're there and you're waiting and like the guards, you know, now I'm not talking, I'm not here to judge anybody about their appearance, but I am gonna tell you my experience and I'm gonna describe things exactly how they were, okay? These guards, you're talking about four and 500 pound huge women in your face yelling at you, get over there, do this, do that, take this off, and like you're just like trying to do what they say, but they're just like spitting in your face. They're like all in your face and they don't care. They're like pushing you around and stuff. And then they make all of us women line up, right? There's 20 of us, right? We're all butt naked, right? Standing there, broad daylight, people walking in and out. We're just standing there and they're getting ready to search us so they can dress us. And let me tell you what, when they search us, first they wanna look under your arms, make sure there's nothing under there. They wanna check all in your hair. You're just standing there with all these other women. They're gonna check under your boobs, all in here, under your ears. And then when they get down, to your bottom girlfriend let me tell you what they do this is literally the most degrading thing i've ever experienced in my life and i'm like very <laughs> i've experienced some stuff trust me they make you all of us women they're all, all these guards are standing on the wall right they're all standing on the wall he tells us to turn around spread them bend over and cough so you're turning around and you're spreading your naked badge and butt open and they scream wider and you pull wider and they scream wider and like you're literally about to rip your freaking cat wide open and split your butt crack open because they want you to open up so far that they want to be able to see your freaking throat through your bottom okay and then they want you to cough like, oh my gosh, it's seriously like the worst, uh, traumatic, crazy, disgusting thing ever. And you know, uh, there's just people walking through like it's like it's a normal Tuesday, you know? It's just, dude, it's crazy. So then that's just intake. Then once you get into the prison, you get into your dorm, you're like the new fresh meat walking through, right? We're all walking through in a line, right? We've got our bag full of <laughs> laundry, disgusting looking stuff. It all smells the same there. Like everything smells like, ugh, it's disgusting. And we're all walking through and from each side there's fences and there's women coming up to the fences to see who the fresh meat is. And they're staring at you and they're hanging on the fence and they're the women are looking, these women have been in there for 20 and 30 years. Some of the women are never getting out. They don't care. They do not care. They don't care what you think. They don't care if they get in trouble. They don't care about nothing because what do they got to lose? They're never going home anyways. So you're already on display. You have to walk the walk through these women. And uh, so then when we get into the dorm, when I get into the dorm, I see this huge room, right? It's hot. There's no air conditioner, right? You, there's no air conditioner. There's no nice cool water fountain. You know, there's no Febreze. It's just a freaking brick warehouse, basically, that is hotter than a mug with as far as the eyes can see, rows and rows and rows of bunk beds of just mattresses on slabs, mattresses on slabs, mattresses on slabs. And I just remember sitting down and just like 
There's nothing that you can do. There's nothing that you can say. You can't decide then, oh, I, you know what, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I changed my mind, I'm a changed person. You're there now, you're not getting out. Like you are in prison. You are in there with rapists and murderers and baby killers and all kinds of stuff, you know, like, it's, it's wild, it's a very wild, surreal experience. There's also a program in the prison called the YO program. It's the Youthful Offender Program, and I think that that's the right wording, but if I'm saying it wrong and somebody knows, let me know, it's been a while, y'all, you know what I am. Okay, so the Youthful Offender Program. I just barely, I don't know how I didn't make it into it because I was only 21 years old. I was a little baby girl. <laughs> and um, that program is for like, I think 21 and younger, I believe. Let me know if I'm wrong, guys. Um, but you have kids in there. I'm talking about kids. I'm talking about six, seven, eight, nine-year-old kids that are in prison for the rest of their life for killing their parents. And I'm gonna tell you what, these kids don't care you think the adults don't care? These kids don't care because they're still so immature in their minds. They don't, they don't, they don't process the way an adult does. And then you put them in prison and then you tell them that they can never get out. They don't care. Them kids were wild. Those kids would put, they put a guard in a trash can one time and set it on fire. They locked guard. They would squat up on the guards, right? You'd have all these kids and they didn't care. They would get 15, 20 of them. They'd squat up on one guard and they'd get them into a closet and lock them into the closet. Like those little kids were some bad, you know what I'm saying? Like if you're going to say some bad beep, little kids, that, <laughs> that program over there yes yes that was that was it right um and then you had another section i can't remember exactly what it was called but it was for the worst of the worst like they were segregated from everybody else or they like tried to escape for some reason there was one lady who had had like she had all this money she was with a drug mafia and they had a helicopter fly in and drop down a rope so she could escape so she was like gangster for real for real and so they had all these people in these areas where they were locked up 23 hours a day and they only came out one hour a day into a little bitty tiny courtyard that they had and man there was all kinds of people in there i mean there was this one lady her and her husband got arrested because they had all these foster children and they hung them up by their oh i'm not gonna say her name i'm not going to they hung them up it's it, they hung them up and they pulled their toenails off um, with pliers. They starved them. There was a pair of twins that they had. They had all these children. A pair of twins that they had that when they, when DCF busted in the door and the cops busted in the door and found them, they were like 15 years old, I believe, and they only weighed 45 pounds. So like, like you just look at some of these people and you just don't understand how they could do those kind of things, right? I mean, you also have in prison a lot of just normal people who have made a bad choice. Like it's crazy like how you can literally make one choice in a split second and your life changed forever. I met this one woman who was a nurse. She had been a nurse for years and years and years. She was like 45 years old. Her and her son were on vacation, her teenage son. She had a couple glasses of wine at dinner time and when she left, her and her son left the dinner, they're on vacation. You know, they leave to go to vacation. Mother and son, you know, they're gonna have a vacation. It's gonna be wonderful and she's gonna come back and go to work. She leaves dinner, she gets into an accident and she hit this man, this elderly man who was already in his 80s, was already, you know, sick, but he passed away. But because she had alcohol in her system, she got a DUI manslaughter and spent 15 years. She lost her home, she lost her child, she lost her career. She's a convicted felon for the rest of her life because of this one split decision she made to have a couple glasses of wine and drive. And um, though, and I'm not making, by any means, I'm not making like excuses for her. I'm just saying like, you know, you see somebody get in a DUI accident and they kill somebody and you think, oh, this drunk person. Well, you know what? Sometimes it's just normal people that made a bad decision and 
they they killed somebody and they ruined their life and their the other person's life and, and the person that passed away's family's life is ruined and i think those are the stories whenever i was in prison that really got me it wasn't the crazy stories because when you go to prison you expect that right you expect you're going to be like around you know jeffrey dahmer type of people but it was more of the normal people that made a mistake and oops their whole life has changed right so that's probably also why i am such a scary person i guess you would say now because i do realize that you can make one wrong decision in a split second in your whole entire life and everybody around your, you, people that love you, all of their lives would be changed, right? So we should be very careful. Moving on. Being in prison is also crazy because at times I was put in the hole, the guard lied on me. Like literally, not even joking. I would have no reason to lie about it 10 years from now. It's not like I'm gonna get out of it. I've already done my time. But being in the hole was probably the lowest of the low that I think that you can that you can get in in life in America. It is prison inside of prison. You're in a room, a room with no windows for 30 days and you can't do anything. All you can do is sit and think. Think about all the things that you should have done, things that you could have done, things that other people are doing on the outs that you are not doing, that people aren't thinking about you, or you have all these memories and you're stuck in time and they just go and go and go. I've always thought too, like the worst punishment in the world is not killing somebody. The worst punishment in the world is putting somebody in a room for years and years and years with only their mind and their thoughts. That's it, no TV to distract them, no books to distract them, nothing. Put them in a the room with nothing else and that is the biggest torture. So I did, twice I did 30 days in the hole, both times guards lied, lied on me. And so yeah, that really sucked. Being in prison is like a little community of forgotten people. There's, you have job assignments, you go eat, you go to the store, um, you can work out, uh, there's a church there, but even though it sounds like a little world of its own, it's very lonely even though there's people in there like women that have never been in a relationship with women before get in relationships. They call it gay for the stay and it happens because people just need companionship and for some reason a lot of the times women or people, especially when you're in that low of a state, um, you need something to be dependent on. So a lot of the times women get into relationships with women and sometimes they're already, you know, lesbian before they come, but you know, there is a gay for the state type of deal that goes on as well too. As soon as they get out, they go back to their husbands or whatever. And, uh, or sometimes they'll have a girlfriend in there and they'll go to visitation with their husbands. And it's like, it's, like it's not even happening on the inside, but really as soon as they leave visitation with their husband and their kids, they're back with their girlfriend in the dorm, right? So, um, yeah. They're, the girls have sex in the showers, and trust me, it is not like what you would imagine. It's not a beautiful looking like thing that they show on TV. It's freaking gross, dude. The showers there are disgusting. They walk around with shower slides on so you don't get fungus in your feet because if your feet touch the floor, you can get a fungus. Like everybody's showering in the, sh in the same standing water. So the water that is running off of one woman's dirty body and imagine every different body type, every different sweat, every different disease, every different everything drips down the same water and you walk through it, okay? So you wear shoes when you take a shower. So it's disgusting. I also met a lot of women in prison that had AIDS and HIV and that's really where I learned that you don't have to look a certain way to have AIDS or HIV. Like I'd always thought before that if you had AIDS or HIV that you were like skinny and drawn up and had lesions all over you but people with AIDS and HIV look just like me and you and a lot of the times they can take tests and it says negative because it lays dormant in their system 
And so I really was like educated on that while I was there by women who did carry AIDS and HIV. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of drug addicts in prison. I would say the majority of the women in prison are drug addicts and um, DUIs. Those are huge, 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 huge amounts that I, that I could see. And the recidivism rate when I was in prison was like, I wanna say 86%. So that meant 86% of people that were in prison would definitely come back again. And I just remember hearing that when I was in prison and thinking that is not gonna be me. Like I do not want to come back here ever, 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 ever again. And um, what changed my life actually, cause when I left prison, I was not the same person, have never been the same person as the one, as the young girl who walked in that prison. I was not the same person when I left and I actually got saved while I was in prison. And that is what changed my life. I was hugely against jailhouse religion. I could not stand to see women in prison going to church. Like I was so against it. I was like, you wasn't in church on the streets or you wouldn't be here. Why are you in church now? I was so against it. But I had this, in 2007, I went to prison in 2005. In 2007, I had this miraculous, touch from God. Like I felt God, my life was changed. I had this supernatural power come over me and I would love to do a video telling you guys all the details about that. If you want to let me know if you're curious in the comments down below. And it's crazy to think that some of those people that I was in prison, they're still there. Like I've been out for 10 years now. When I went into prison at 21, I had never even had a legal driver's license. Did you, do you know that? Isn't that wild? I got my first real driver's license at 25 years old. Like that is how crazy of a beginning of my life that it was. And when I got out, you know, I went to college and, and did all this stuff and completely turned my life around, but I'll always be a convicted felon. And that is hard. Yes. So this video is already getting super long, but I just wanted to tell you guys my prison story. If you have any questions or comments or anything or similar experiences or anything, please let me know down below. And I really want to tell you guys, this is the most important part of the video is that if you have a family member or a friend or a son or a daughter or a mother or a father, or an aunt or an uncle or a child's parent, you know, that you're with a baby daddy, a baby mama, whoever that had continuously gets in trouble, is in and out of jail or is on drugs and you don't think that they're gonna change or you're giving up on them or you're tired, don't give up. Like people will change. I'm telling you what, so many people gave up on me. Nobody believed in me. And look at me now, I'm 10 years later, I have a beautiful life with an amazing husband and two amazing kids, all by God's glory and God's grace do I have all that. But you know, I like I said, I. I'm not a drug addict, I'm not an alcoholic, I'm not any of these things, and nobody believed that I could change. And when I got saved, nobody believed that it was real. But don't give up hope. Never, ever, 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 ever give up hope on somebody because they can change. And sometimes just you, that one person believing in them, when they do change, they'll ne that means something. They'll never forget that. So yeah, I hope you guys liked my prison story. Thug life. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I hope you guys like my story. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any videos with me this year, 2018. Thanks for watching, guys.